Welcome to Windwall Forests. Not a map we cast often, so appreciating it double. Aquaxam is playing as the orcs. That's hot. It's main, of course, and he's gonna be going with the occultist. In style. And on the other side, we've got Night Hunter. He's gonna be playing as the dwarves. And that is a Hierophant. We got a triple stone cutter in the back there, hunting cabin as well. Uh, could be scary. This is a very easy stone mine to harass. Should the uh, occultist decide to go through, we'll have to see what skills are picked up. It looks like we've got the usual thing for Night Hunter going on. Oh no, he actually got himself a totem of flames. Is that a common thing now? Are we are we done saying that's not common? I don't know. Scatter shot and kill shot, of course, picked up. Yeah, should be enough focus to do all the things. With an extra axe wielder at the beginning, too, that is also a little bit uncommon these days. Uh, but people are just tanking with the mole rider instead and getting the faster first sector. But this is certainly an option, anyway. Enough chit chat about the details. Occultist has Blood Sacrifice, Demonic Pact, Death Resilience, Brute Force. So that's a level 2 one already. He went for this base first. And in the main, Aqua Kazam has got two hunting cabins and five lumber mills. No, just gonna be four. He went for food faster. So that's interesting. I have a bit of food abundance. And of course the lumber mill is coming in right here. Uh, it doesn't look like he's gonna upgrade this flag first, maybe? Maybe he's just gonna upgrade this to a frontier? Very interesting. Aqua Kazam is one of those guys that uh, makes remarkably little goblins uh, and gets a faster tier 2 timing than most. At least normally, I'm, I'm sure he does other stuff sometimes. No, it's gonna be this. A little bit late on that, but no problem. Borg Rider. Uh, going up north, I guess. I mean, he was hurt, so I, I guess he was just looking for a way out. Uh, might be able to piss off the, the creeps and pull them into the stone pole or something. I think actually that's what happened here. Uh, while we were talking about the occultist hero. Pretty sure that Night Hunter is the only only dwarf left now. I mean Night Hunter is normally a dark elf main, but in this case he's playing dwarves. Uh, he's been exploring the race for a long time now. Played like 70 plus games or whatever. You can correct me in the chat on the number. Uh, anyway, a lot of games, a lot of practice, a lot of exploration. And hopefully that will come in useful for him in the league. Uh, but Meta Place, we'll have to see. Wrong place, wrong time. This is rough. So, Vinwall for Dwarves, you gotta get a tier 2 timing around 9 minutes because your food will run out in the main. And then that's that. We have a lot of wood, so you could technically transition to that and have other bases do the, do the food stuff for you. But only having 150 food in your main base is not that great for a 2 hunt build. So this might be just one of the cases where... Where dwarves might want to consider getting the uh, one of the wood choppers here. Okay, what's going on here under the trees? That axe is getting dangerously low. 
I really like that Night Hunter is taking this creep camp now, but I mean, better now than when Aqua Kazam is gonna be all over him, right? But yeah, losing the Axelers definitely hurts. Uh, gotta keep in mind the orc buildings themselves are fairly weak, and Axelers have pretty good DPS. Taking them down early might be a good option, but then again, a Hierophant is interested in that level 5, and on Windwall Forest, you get it fairly easily. Level 4 already done. And the next creep camp is right here. So yeah, like I said, easy. Level 5. Excellent. 4 hit points! There's a warg! It's a bully, but it's not enough of a bully. The Aqua has a lot of bases. Not a whole lot of upgraded bases. He's gotten himself his frontier outpost. That's a risen car rock. He's a... <laughs> He's in tier 2 before 6 minutes! What? Barrack! Barrack! Aqua Kazam has the better armor now. That's tier 3. Uh, his sword is tier 2. That is unusual. I'll take it. Interested to see how much damage that actually has with the demonic pact. Normal one has like 254 is what I've seen last time. I mean, it, it will depend on your brute force amount, but still. Curious to see how much that's going to be in the end. Um, level 5 for the higher offense should be in in the moment. And it's just extra you know, usual stuff. Uh, no... No stone halls yet, so... Will it be a fast tier 2 for our dwarves? This is just a normal town hall. Not a capital yet. The food is about to run out. Night Hunter will have to switch from hunting cabins to woodcutters at this rate. Also, how come this base is 120 food? That is so strange. What? 120. That's such a weird number. How did that happen? <laughs> Is it like that here too? Is there a mismatch? How did that happen? Uh, I've never seen that before. Okay. Is that enough XP then? For level 5? Windmill Forest broken, confirmed. To be fair, if those were 150, I I would not shed a tear. That would be nice. It's a frontier post now. It's two stone halls. Yeah, yeah, that should be level 5 once Night Hunter goes after it. Because Zam has 14 gobos. Man, he's powering hard on that economy. Uh, all frontier posts. The iron mines are done. And the war pit is researching. More iron mines must be on the way somewhere. Yep, right here. Just missing the stone. Not for long. It's gonna be done. Okay, 364. And with Defra uh, aliens, he's got some pretty good armors now. Gobos will be slowly cutting away at the Ice Favor. Chop, chop. There's level 5. Uh, we have got Barrage, we have got Brute Force free. And we've got scatter shot too. Now the problem is, if this Hierophant gets pulled into Hunter, she dies instantly. There's, there's absolutely no chance you're saving her. Uh, she might have 1650 hit points now, but... Wait, is that coming from anything special? It's just the levels, right? Yeah. Yeah, the Wyvern is still... Uh, chilling up here.
And Kazam is level 6. Selling some potions again. Getting the real good Claymore. Should I probably sell this. Uh, might be able to get some more potions. Not sure he actually has much more in the main. I'm sure he'll get back at some point to do stuff. Wait, what ring did he get? He just sold it. Uh, it must have been a mana ring. The Apotis does not use mana. All the spells on him cost hit points. Then again, he can heal himself using Blood Confluence. Uh, based on anyone bleeding around him. Leech is 130 health. So that's not only a lot of damage. It's 130 pure damage, right? Uh, you also have Sanguine Burst, which is a 390 damage if someone's bleeding. So do the two together. You got a sick amount of sickening amount of damage there. Like this is a deletion of infantry right there. Brute force damage occultist is nothing to be underrated. And honestly, until the Dwarven player has a lot of balloons or like a million sentries in the sharpshooter stance, you're not gonna be in trouble. And the sentries are not particularly tanky at 700 hit points. The Hunters can pretty much deal with them. Like, they are tier 1 units, right? So There is better stuff out there. My God! Oh, everyone's gone. That's exactly what I meant. Sanguine burst and a blood confluence leech. Everyone's gone, and and you can pull in with the nullify ability as well. So, is your enemy far away? It doesn't matter. Get over here. So yeah, the Occultus is very, very strong, especially in the Smith game when there's no uh, mega ultra tanky units yet. That said, once the Dwarven player gets to Berserkers and maxes out somehow, Orcs are going to be in trouble. But look at that! Yeah, Kazam is really fast on the Hunter timing, so... You can't mess around. I think you got a turtle and just uh Maybe some minor harass on the iron mines? I don't even know. I don't think you can get it fast enough without completely sacrificing your own eco and own tier 2 timing. So I think you just gotta late game it or something. Then again, on the map like Windwall Forest, that's going to be really hard. Orcs are just going to take over the bases one by one. And when you have that big of an army early on, you can just ride pick sectors and, uh, <laughs> and run through them. Not against this army, maybe, but, you know, you chip away at it and then you right click. Yeah, do some Sanguine Burst and Blood Confluence and they're gone. Those units coming from everywhere. Let's see if Aqua has done any other research. Uh, not yet. But there might be other stuff. Well, I guess he's just uh, making it. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, we'll need some upgrades soon on the sectors, though, because uh, the population limit is fast approaching. I really like the addition of Brutes now. Uh, they'll definitely help with the siege damage against the buildings. Taking these down is pretty important that's a fortified outpost now and yeah with dwarves that's pretty powerful i mean 10,000 health and fortified already and then there's a border fortress which which is gonna give even more uh, i think it upgrades to 2,000 
So it's gonna be 12,000 in the end. There's a bunch of Earth Shapers, which are gonna help here nicely with the... Oh my god. Hierophant is already starting to struggle, but gets off a fan freaking tastic Barrage. Hits the entire front line and some of the Hunters. The Earth Shapers are just nice here, adding the magic damage. And hopefully soon, Night Hunter can also upgrade their, their ability, the shield. There it is. So that's going to give some nice resistance. His problem is, while they're fighting, they're such short range units. They're going to be in trouble there. Oh, the pull again. And with the Hunter Focus Fire, the Hierophant is definitely struggling. Only 30% on our resistances. Aqua does decide to leave this behind. Uh, he's, he's killed enough. His army was starting to get a little bit weak. Good call to just back out of this before risking the tech units. What else have we got here? Oh yeah, I mean, Night Hunter will very, very soon need to... Wait, that's a fourth Stonecutter. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yeah, he'll very soon need to do more farm transitioning, but some iron is on the way. Uh, he's got a bit of iron in the bank right now, so let's see if that food and iron thing will work out. What is that, by the way? A capital? Uh, that is a tier 2 building, right? It's gonna be Citadel tier 3. Yeah. So no Berserkers just yet. Earthshaper is stacking it for now. There are Granite Halls, so balloons should be happening. Golems? I, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, it's like... Hunters just mount them. They have no armor, right? So... Short range teleport coming in. Trying to do what he can to keep this going. Uh, the Earthshapers, the few that he does have, will have to go into the protective glyph mode. All of those workers! <laughs> Imagine a Sanguine Burst and all of those workers. That would have been something. Uh, Night Hunter trying to build some buildings really far away from the Sector Center. And the Sector does go down. Aqua Kazam taking quite a bit of splash damage from the Golems. Needs to focus them down because if he does allow them to do the work, then they are pretty good. And they do have resistances. Uh, once the Glyphs are popped from the Earth Shapers, but the Hierophant going down. And a lot of other basic units dying. And with all these buildings getting cleared out, Night Hunter is definitely being reset. And Aqua Kazam just instantly able to upgrade. Let's look at his resources. Uh, yeah, I think this is next. The Tempest Golem is not too much of a challenge for him at this point. Not without Night Hunter uh, harassing at the same time. And Night Hunter does not have a big army. 42 population against 166 is definitely not easy. This golem is by far the easiest if you have some tech units to kill it. Like, it's so much weaker than the Infernal Golem, it's actually crazy. Even the spin to win one is way better. Like, the knockdown ability here is just. I don't know. It does a little enfeeble, so what? Usually a pretty easy kill. Anyway, Kazam has a bit of gold now. And he picked up a ring of the Sacred Rite. Minus 20% ability cooldowns. That's exactly what he needed. That's going to make him so much more powerful. With Blood Confluence only, need, only needing 36 seconds. Sanguine Burst only needing 16 seconds. That is insane. He doesn't even have Concentration. Uh, which he can respec into later. He's got Blood Harvest for himself. He's got 3 Vitality. And 5 Brute Force levels. Wowzers. 450 damage from each Shangun Burst. Wow. If you are not scared, you should be. Hold each other, chat, or something. He's tier 3 as well. Black Ash Collectors are coming in. Uh, won't be needing this base as long as he has this. This is the only place for tier 3 resources on this map. 
<laughs> Laughs in Dark Elf. No Dark Elves here though. I love the Earth Shapers, it's just they're so short ranged. 22 range, what is that? So sad, sad little range. Meanwhile, Hunters is like, okay, 75. There go all the glyphs, but the Sanguine Burst should go down there. I think it did. But this is very, very healthy. Didn't even need to proc anything. Uh, Demonic Pact wise. Golems are doing okay with 20 resistance here. But as soon as it's gone, they just get deleted. Like, I think... I think you make golems, you lose. Honestly. Uh, unless they're constantly in the glyph aura. We've got Berserkers, which is a fantastic addition to this army. Too bad there's only two of them. Even they can't hold this. This is... Just a little bit too hard. Too many of them here. Oh, man. And Night Thunder did very nicely here, but now he doesn't have iron. And his production base is a toast in the middle. Akrakazam taking over is growing bigger and bigger as time goes by. And even though those first sectors are gonna be exhausted soon... Uh, he's still got a scouting post here, oh my god. Like there's so many sectors, he actually doesn't need to upgrade them. Only if he wants even more economy, which... Look at his resources, he doesn't want it, he doesn't need it. I think he's primarily upgrading now to uh, have backups and to have more production in case of a remax is needed. Uh, cool, we got Bloodforge with the first level of upgrades coming in for attack and armor. There's a Shaman Hut, so whenever, whenever Kazan researches the troll tech, which he did, uh, he also researched the passer drummer tech. So you can do the Pester Shaman combo at some point. No rush. He's in a good position. Having to deal with Barrage again, but just as a pull. <laughs> she never had a chance. Night Hunter did level up there, but that's the end. Brutes are surrounding the border fortress, and that's a major iron base. Again, also a production base. Nah. You don't come out of this. Fair enough. Aquakazam takes game one with that. And we've got... A hero damage over 50k. So Twitch voters who voted yes... Are gonna cash in hard. Nice. But if you're on YouTube, you should have been on Twitch. Spawning in the blue color, playing as orcs once again. This is Aqua Kazam. And we've got an occultist coming out and on the other side. That is Night Hunter. Playing as dwarfs again. Confident, confident, I like it. We got the high hierophant. Guys, do you think, just for the resistances, that it might be worth going with the warrior of the depths here? Because the higher fan I find just gets pulled so easily by the occultist. I'm not sure what the counterplay to that is, honestly. I mean, you've got in the skill tree here the eagle eye perk, which is extra range. But does 60 range make anything worth it? I mean, barrage is such a shotgun spell. If you do it from long range, it's not gonna do anything. So entire ultimate is a joke, right? You could use Totem Infusion, I guess, but they're only gonna be better as long as you're close by. 140 range is, I guess, pretty good. But Totems are very underwhelming in terms of HP, so they get deleted. I'm not sure it's that, that's worth much in the mid-game. I think Warrior of the Depths might be the way to go in this matchup. Can't deal with scoundrel spam, harass, hyro can. Need the range perk, okay. 
I'm just here recrafting, but I think it should be worth worth trying. Nice axe field of defense against the warg. No annoying allowed. Scaling post is here. You got a stone cutter. Nice pick off. Because I'm just going for the standard route. Ooh, you know what? I really like this spot for the lumber mill. That's big brain place. I've actually never done that before myself. Imagine you can put any of them there. Today I learned. Is that an early bear grab? Or just a sector? I, I I would say it's just a sector. It's generally worth getting the cutthroats first. And then you can just teleport back like Kazam is doing right now. stuff is definitely gonna help Night Hunter to creep faster. Uh, what do you guys think about the Totem of Silence? Because it does include Enfeebling and Weakening. So on a map with a lot of creeps, it might be totally worth it to be honest. And to be, at the same time, Enfeeble and Weakening would be really useful as well against the against the Occultist, right? Because he has... He, he gets more armored. He gets... He has a demonic pack which gives him more damage, so producing the extent of both might be so useful, but I said this many times, totems are weak in HP and so easy to target, then I don't know if any of that is really worth it. Uh, that's level 3 right there, and they should be meeting at the bear, but actually Kazam turns around, he goes more conservative, because he he doesn't really like to make too many units early on. He's made the 6th scoundrel, and that's pretty much the number for him. Time to click tier 2. Well, he should be able to right now. Might get one more sector first. Uh, teleports back, and time to get the bear, I guess. Maybe I'll go for this North Bear. Night Hunter hasn't started on his yet. But there are quite a few Axe Healers. Oh, this one is gonna go for the Golem. That's unfortunate. It's a long detour. Kill, quick kill. But Kazam has done his own too. Roughly at the same time. Should be able to teleport up here and go down. He's got tier 2. Two frontier posts already. So those are gonna be fortified up posts soon. And the iron mines are kicking in. Oh yeah, that's an important base. Especially if the game goes long, you can go tier 3 with this. Uh, so much iron here, 750 iron in this base, so definitely worth the detour. 
even though it slows down your level 5 timing. And there is 300 black ash too, which otherwise is only found in the middle. I'm pretty sure, well, I mean, four big iron bases on the map are here. Night Hunter didn't hurry up too much to get to the other bear either. So he's just taking all the sectors possible, preparing for the long haul. See how that goes. Good stun on that dire bear. It's gonna hit everyone with the weakening and maybe one melee attack there, but I mean they'll heal back up. There's level five right there for the higher friend. Her time is now. What is this? Doing stuff. Not level five. Didn't go for the bear yet. It's too slowing orbs. Slowing orbs? Okay. I guess. Okay. Here's the thing. You pull. You have hunters. You target that thing. The Hierophant. And then you throw a slowing orb. Like. What a bully. <laughs> it's very, very powerful for sure. Uh, how, how much is the slowing here? Minus 50%? What? Okay. Well, there you go, guys. Minus 50% on that. I think it might be just horribly underrated. That sounds like a, an absolute hero killer to me. You gotta get that thing with elves, too. Uh, Ranger, specifically. You knock down some hero. You throw a slowing orb on them. And then you just warden them to death, like... There's no way that that's not underused. Dwarves got a little weak here, but there's no base. Certainly no frontier outpost. That's that's a sacrifice here, right? Like Kazam got the other bases, but <laughs> not this. A little opportunity for Night Hunter, but then again, this support is level five, so it's not bad news or anything. Occult is plus slow, really deadly. Yes, I can see it. Well, I'm glad everyone's evolving the the game in their own little way. Man, like just now, I learned that it's 50%. I thought it's like some 30% bullshit, you know, something you don't really care about, but 50? Holy crap. That is Druid Meme Beam level. Oh. You probably keep going here. Man, those axillaries got cleaned up. And the occultist has lost some health. Oh, the weakening orb only hits one hunter. That is so unlucky for a night hunter there. Yep, that's a fantastic trait for Aqua. Fantastic. Gonna build up the iron mine count, of course. Uh, I'm curious. Are we gonna see? Iron mines up here as well. And, you know, farms like pretty much everywhere else where there's no iron mines. But then again, this map is like there's iron mines everywhere. Orc is so powerful on this map. Because there's like, what bases don't have iron? That's the question. It, it's these bases. And that's it. 
that's every other base is iron. <laughs> Not these. The center bases don't. The very center base doesn't. And these connection bases don't. Or Kevin. Ice Raven. And the focus ring. Oh. And these occultists and uh Troll Chieftain players, they're not very fortunate in this tournament, huh? Just keep getting these crappy focus rings. Well, It is what it is. Ay ay ay. Lightning Wavern. More scary than a Tempest Golem. <laughs> What's this? Hellfrank, now that's good. Now we're talking. So, just looking around the map, Night Hunter is actually going very wide for a Dwarf player. Uh, it's cheaper than upgrading, for sure, but that's a lot. Granite Halls are at work, making Fire Golems. In terms of upgrades, we've got nothing so far. Uh, so it's just, it's just punchy boys, basically. But we'll see, we'll see. There's a lot of iron here. Uh, so that could be translated into a bunch of balloons, which are more iron heavy than and charcoal, whereas it's the other way around for the fire golems. Very little iron and a ton of charcoal. Looks like he's making the correct choice of going after the Tempest Golem. Maybe I'll find a Noria's Command or some real nice amulet there. Not quite sure what that will do for the Hierophant though, because even with all those buffs, Hunters do one tap you if they're high enough in numbers, so... So, fire or ice, what wins? he get though uh hey it's a sacred right ring that's pretty good what about the points uh it's a lot of brute force no range perk oh we got a totem of silence okay i'm interested to see how that goes now our occultist has bought the good stuff but uh yeah it's mostly potions so that was a lot of potion purchases, and I'm sure Kazam will be back at some point to to purchase the other good stuff. There's still a lot of things left on this map. Like these two Waverns down there. One fire, one poison. Or maybe he'll just collect, uh, collect the gold from the army here. Over time that becomes a lot as well. Um, so, this game slowed down. What are we up to? I think we're maxing out, guys. Both players just maxing out. Uh, Blood Forge is getting Xerx Steel. Already got Fight for the Cow 1. And we're starting to see the first fortified outposts. A bunch of these are still scouting. Uh, also, no other upgrades just yet. Tier 3 still ways out. That's a lot of iron mines. Holy. Night Hunter wants to leave nothing to the orcs. 
What's that production like? We've got two grand horse now. Oh, tier three is in for the dwarves. Have the fire golems been upgraded? No, the workshop is just coming in, so this attack is might be a little bit too early. Oh, the fortified apples is gonna go down, and that's a lot of iron mines that are just turned idle by this. Is this army good enough to make this work? There's not gonna be any protective glyphs, and the hero goes down immediately to the hunter spam. The berserkers are doing what they can, but they're basically just super sleepers, so. I don't know. Real good single target damage there, but... There's not enough of them. Twenty-five hunters. Oh, these are iron mines. Interesting. So Night Hunter is really not messing around with that iron mining. Although, unfortunately, it doesn't have any in the other bases as far as I can tell. So that could bite him in the future. Of course, this base, at least. Okay. So he's migrating the northern operations to the south. Because Zav is gonna gather all this now. Even just upgrading this base one time. The scouting post is gonna be enough because so much stone is being dropped from these iron mines and actually there's a little bit of iron li laying on the ground too this is totally worth doing like you get more out of the resources on the ground than you get out of the outpost itself <laughs> and that's a lot of dwarf corpses so yeah I think Kazam is very happy with this but at the same time Superior units are being made this time for Night Hunter, and let's see how far you can get with that. Obviously, we're very far away from anything like Berserker upgrades with their shiny swords. Uh, you need Moon Silver for that, and yep, that's far away. Need to be in either the center with these sectors, which have not yet been taken, or up here, which is currently not looking to do yet. A minus 60 stone, it would be hard to. Night Hunter is full pop. I think he actually has a chance. That was looking bad for a moment, but I think he recovered. Musil was smattery. Uh, might not be the safest place for this, buddy. <laughs> it's the most contested base on the map. Oh no. Very expensive building. And not particularly powerful. Very slowly built. 50 seconds. Holy shit. You know, I would like a Warhorn. As well later, when it's Moon Silver. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing some. I think this game will actually get to the Warhorn stage. And now I'm curious, are we gonna be able to have so many Warhorns that they're constantly on? Because they actually don't require workers, so once you have the economy for it, you can just constantly buff the army with it. I love the buffs. I, I'm sure people on like YouTube don't see this often. Uh, one of the buffs on the Warhorn is... Uh, and then power, so damage and speed. The other one is... What? No. One of them is... Empower, the other is the speed thing, which I forget the name of. Empower is just damage. Fight is on now. Golems in punchy punch mode. There go all the armors. Dude, that occultist might actually die. What? He took it down. Must have been the weakening. All the abilities from the berserkers have also been procced. They had some sweet, sweet damage. Dude, this might be actually Night Hunter's game. Uh, it, it's a little scary, but it could be. Uh, no golem stance yet. 
Come on, balloons are going very close to the base for comfort. They don't have armor, so the base attacking them is obviously very powerful here. Ooh, nice little barrage on the hunters. And also, the sentries are doing a pretty good job, too. Uh, Kazam is down to 100 population, but does hold the base because all of the golems are dead. And there's nothing to siege. So, Night Hunter will have to recuperate and try again. Doesn't have a lot of economy behind this though. 31 food per minute versus 67 food per minute. Double income for Aqua Kazam. And as for Iron, we're looking at 17 here. Versus 55. So at least Night Hunter has got that going for him. There's also Black Ash coming in, however, for, for Aqua. So even though he has a little less iron coming in, he can make two types of units here with the tech resources. And they'll last quite a bit. Have you got everything for... Because um, Shaman Hut is on. And yeah, the weapon upgrade is coming in. Level 3. Uh, we don't have yet the Incinerate, but that will only cost Black Ash 2. Looks like Brutes are being made. A bit of everything, actually. Don't know about the Gobbles. That might be a risk at this point. <laughs> Hey, balloon mode. Let's go. It's been a while, balloons. There was a barrage there. Okay, we can't really see shit. <laughs> Let's go back. Yo, Kazam's stuff. Where is it? He's surviving somehow at 100 pop because the golems, they don't siege. That's the one thing that Night Hunter is going to need so badly. Okay, the weakening is coming from the totems. I keep not noticing it. But it's actually not too bad. Did Night Hunter get the perk? No, no perk. Just totem infusion. And as long as he's closed, they're better, I guess. Uh, it doesn't say the weakening just yet. Uh, you have to actually see it. Oh, I know that the Berserkers have really good building damage, but you still want the Golems upgrade, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not. I mean, these guys have more HP, more armor. They suck up the same same resource. So I could see it. Okay, the upgrade is coming in. But the enchanted axes are blocking it. Uh, okay, the moon silver will be ready now in a moment. Lots of production. And the tunnel might be the first one we've cast in a while. Good use of tunnels can go a really long way, especially if you just connect it with your friendly bases at first. But here, then you go here. That can do a lot of damage, especially if you start making multiple tunnels once you can afford it, which Night Hunter absolutely can afford multiple tunnels right now. Just he doesn't have a lot of Berserkers yet, so I'm not sure he can actually kill bases, but with the Fire Golem stance, that's a different story. Probably just waiting for that upgrade before committing to anything. Uh, balloons be hiding on the right side of the map. I actually can't scroll up there, so this is... How do you even play against that? Do you turn your camera and... <laughs> Did you guys know about this? That's funny. Okay, go through the tunnel. Uh, it's gonna be just a friendly base. Exactly where I said. Wow. Look at that. I swear I didn't watch this. Okay, what's Kazam up to? Uh, there's the first shamans. Seven right now. 
an armor level 3 coming in. I don't see no tribe totem just yet. Maybe he'll get to it later. But yeah, that base is toast and we gotta teleport out the door so safe. And they're gonna hit the north base next. So they should be able to take all that over. Kazam remains at 200 population. However, I don't think he really cares about losing a sector center. Not yet. If Night Hunter does this 20 times, that's a very different story. And especially if you keep making those, uh, those sounds, it, it becomes a bit tough to keep track of which one's connected to which one. But totally worth it. Sure, the Neon Axes are in. Oh, wow, look at that splash damage. What? That's pretty good. Here come the glyphs. Can the Hierophant survive this with all that extra armor? She gets away. What a slippery bastard. Night Hunter. Remaining around 200 population. I think he's trying to make Pyromancers or something. Yep. A little bit too many in the queue, so they're kind of blocking him, but it's not that bad. Ooh, that border fortress is actually in trouble. That's a lot of roots. Uh, yep, not turning around to fight might become a problem. It's a lot of base. That's a lot of stuff he's losing here. Uh, probably why it's okay. I, I mentioned the warhorn earlier, right? That would have changed us completely. Like empowered units. Here in that fight, they would have killed everything. It's one of the reasons dwarves shouldn't be losing the bases in the late game very easily if they have the resources. Of course, the resources run out, so once that happens, it's a very different story. Yeah, it's the same same buffs from the Berserkers, so you can't really stack them. It's unfortunate. But the war can affect the entire army. What is this? Hello? You're new. Hello there. So this guy can clear the entire base by himself. I, I know Saitama, but first you need a lot. You might want some other units at some point. Um, also, you can have multiple Warhorns and keep it actually constant, whereas the Berserkers will run out of focus. That is a lot of combat balloons. Yeah, the Warhorn covers like an entire base. What? When did this happen? When did this happen? Did what? He just clicked past everything. Oh no, the Citadel might actually just die. What the hell happened? Oh my god. That's what Night Hunter must have been thinking. <laughs> He's out of the tournament just like that. Well. That's an ouchie. Yeah, good job guys distracting me with the Warhorn versus Berserker talk. Well done. Like and subscribe YouTube. You can do it.